Thank you, Ernie, for that rousing prelude as we begin our worship this Easter Sunday. Why don't you stand uh, and let's share our Easter greeting. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. We begin today's worship service in the waters of baptism where we were first called into faith to give thanks for these waters that have transformed us. Let us pray. We thank you, O oh God, for the river of life that flows freely from your throne through the earth and through the city and through every living thing. And in Jesus Christ, you have calmed all the troubled waters in our world. You've nourished us and enclosed us in your safety, and you've called us forth and sent us out and to lost places and to barren places. You are with us always. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more and claim us again as your beloved and holy people, quenching our thirst, cleansing our hearts, and wiping away every tear. Amen. Let us sing on this Easter morning, hymn 389, Christ is Alive. And the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And on this uh, Easter morning, let us uh, sing a festival of joy. This is the feast. 
feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength, and honor, blessing, and glory are his. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. With all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. <clears throat> alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. end this gathering with a prayer. Almighty and eternal God, you are the strength of all those who believe and the hope of all those who doubt. May we who have not seen have faith in you and receive the fullness of Christ's blessing. Christ who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Do we have children want to come forward for a children's sermon? Children want to come forward? Come on. There we go. We got a few takers. We do. <laughs> Did you forget your picture? Your picture? Oh, I thought that worked. I, I thought that was the best part. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning. How are you guys, all right? Okay, I was looking, I thought maybe we had another one. Okay. So were you all here last week for Easter? Some of you, no, yes, yeah. So those of you who were here last week, how's it different this week? Any ideas? Yeah? The what? Yeah. Were there more flowers last week? Yeah. I have a few left this week. Yeah. Um, were there more people here last week? Probably. Yeah. I and mean, it's usually yeah. Easter. The cross is white, but that was last week too. Yeah. Yeah. How about how about how people were dressed? Were they all fancied up last week? Some? Did you guys have special outfits for Christmas? Or Christmas, what am I saying? Easter? Yeah, a lot of people do. Yeah. So it's a little different. It's a little different on Easter Sunday because it's, you know, it's one of the big, big, big Sundays for Christians, right? 
there's, there's Christmas is the big holiday, and Easter, and, and uh, Pentecost. That's coming later. But anyway, so it's different. Um, I think a lot of people come on Easter because when you're surrounded by lots of people and great music, and the music's always great here, Ernie, uh, but you, you know, a lot of times there's trumpets playing and, and there's lots of people singing and there's great hymns and it's easy. It's easy to believe that Jesus is alive because you got all these people supporting you and lifting you up and you know, it's okay. And I think sometimes it's not that easy. I mean, have you ever seen Jesus? No? You've never seen him? Do you think these people have seen Jesus, any of them? Anybody seen Jesus? Mm, no. Don't, don't mistake Pastor Carl for Jesus, okay? That's just <laughs> way different. Way different. Um, no, he doesn't have long hair, does he? Nope, nope. That kind of... <laughs> Sort of runs uh, among Lutheran pastors. Anyway, that's a different question too. So, if you can't see Jesus, if you've never seen him, do you believe in Jesus? Well, why? If you've never seen him. Because um, you never know until you see him. <laughs> you don't know for sure until you see him. Well, okay. And I asked that question at the last service. And one very, very bright little girl said, well, you can't see the wind, but you can see what it does. I thought, yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? Maybe we can't see Jesus exactly, but can we see what Jesus does? What does he do? Hmm? He helps. He helps people, doesn't he? he help you? Yeah? Yeah. I think, I think that's the best way that we can, we can really believe Jesus is alive and that God is real is because we see what people who believe that, we see what they do. They care about other people. They treat people well. They're kind. They're generous. They're usually... Usually happy, not always, but sometimes. That's it. Those are microphones. That's different, okay? What do you see people who say they believe in Jesus? What do you see them do? What do some of the people here at Messiah do? Do they, do they feed people at, at a food pantry? Do they fix meals for people who are hungry? Yeah, they do. I'm telling you, they do. And they, they gather things for, for Joseph's coat and, and for people who don't have enough stuff with clothes or, or uh, beds or whatever. When you see people doing things like Jesus did, you think, okay, maybe I haven't exactly seen Jesus, but I've seen what Jesus does and I've seen what Jesus' people do. And so maybe I can trust that. And I'm telling you, you can trust that. So look around this week. All right, look around for what people do that you think, you know, that's probably what Jesus would do. And yourself, do some things you think Jesus might do. Help somebody, be kind to somebody, forgive somebody, love somebody. Can you do that? Yeah, you can. I'm sure you can. Okay, thanks. See you guys again. Continue with the readings. This is not Virginia. <laughs> A reading from the book of Acts. When they had brought them, they had them stand before the council. The high priest questioned them, saying, We gave you strict orders not to teach in his name, yet 
here you have fulfilled, you have filled Jerusalem with your teaching and you are determined to bring this man's blood on us. But Peter and the apostles answered, we must obey God rather than any human authority. The God of your ancestors raised up Jesus, whom you had killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior that he might give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to those things. And so is the Holy Spirit whom God has given to those who obey him. The word of the Lord. A reading from the book of Revelation. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. And from the seven spirits who are here before his throne and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and the ruler of the kings of the earth to him who loves us and freed us from our sins by his blood and made us to be a kingdom priests serving his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And on his account, all the tribes of the earth will avail. So it is to be. Amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. The word of the Lord. Really, you ought to be smiling when you sing that. I'm just saying. You tell them. <laughs> the Holy Gospel, according to St. John, the 20th chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here. And see my hands, reach out your hand and put it to my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, that through believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated. It's 
So I want to begin at the outset by stating what really ought to be obvious when anybody comes through these doors to worship, but maybe it's not. Because some people have a little wrong-headed assumption about what it means to be a faithful Christian. But what is obvious is this. Thomas is welcome here. Thomas is welcome here. And so is everybody else who lives with, as often by doubt and skepticism and reluctance, as by confidence and clarity and willingness. Practicing the faith, it's not the same as never doubting or struggling with God. It was 20-some years ago, uh, it was our regular family Sunday evening experience to watch the X-Files. Some of you remember the X-Files series. Most in the family were loyal followers. Our daughter wasn't so much, but yeah. And it's not that we believed in extraterrestrials or, or spaceships, but we were captivated by the unpredictable twists and turns in the lives of Fox Mulder and Dana Scully. You remember them. I also think we were attracted to the theme that ran through the series, that there's always more to see than meets the eye. That, I think, that's a religious theme. And it cuts through much of life and, and through all of our very best literature. I was kind of sad when the TV series ended, happy a few years later when, when they did an X-Files movie. And I remember very clearly one line in that movie, spoken by Fox Mulder when in conversation with Scully about the reality of life beyond the world, our world, he said this, he said, I want to believe. I want to believe. Me too. Me too, Mulder. I, I want to believe. I'm not so much again about extraterrestrials and that sort of thing. I want to really believe that Jesus is alive and, and that by that resurrection, God has changed everything. I want to believe that there is a larger, truer, deeper reality than, than what seems to be available, available by my sight. I want to believe in what, what I can only call God, and I want to make that the center of my life. But it's a tall order. It's a tall order, and frankly, I can't take somebody else's word for it. I've got to experience it for myself. And I need practice, and I need patience to give myself to that belief fully. If you've ever experienced any kind of death, and almost all of us have, a death of a loved one, a broken relationship, a vanished job, a broken dream, there is a certain kind of lostness that goes with it. Everyone deals with that lostness in their own way, in their own time. But there comes a point to, for everyone that, okay, it's time to move on. Maybe it takes a week or months or even years. Sometimes, though, I've, I've spoken and dealt with people who want to skip the grief. They want to move right through it, or move on almost immediately, as if they might avoid the pain of that loss. It never works. Never works. And I wonder if maybe Thomas was one of those, one of those, hey, let's just get on with it, people. Didn't want to face the grief of all that they had experienced in those recent days. I wonder if that's why he didn't show up with the disciples that first Easter evening. Jesus showed up. Thomas wasn't there. And maybe that's why he was so resistant to buying their story. Saying that he just wasn't going to believe it unless he could literally touch the resurrected Jesus. Touch those wounds. See, I suspect Thomas wanted to believe. But grief is hard. Broken dreams are heavy. And well, so why don't we just put it all behind us and move on? It might have seemed easier to Thomas that way. 
You know, it's hard. It's hard to go all in when it comes to believing in this resurrection stuff. It's hard to go all in in living a life with God at the center. And Thomas' grief, it must have complicated this whole issue of having a new center of life. It's hard enough to allow God to be the Lord of our living instead of our living out of our egos. Thomas, after following Jesus those years, he must have been edging, edging right up to a, to a full life commitment to Jesus. And then boom, Holy Week, crucifixion, death, it's all over. And Jesus is dead. So Thomas is not going back there easily. See, we need to be honest about this trusting this believing business. And in John's gospel, trusting, believing, seeing, same things. It's not undemanding. It's not. While there is in each side of us a, a, a deep yearning to be held by something or, or someone large and true, and to hold something large and true, at the same time, we want to be free of it all. We, we want to be free to do anything but be called to obedience and discipline. We want to be, be freedom to live, free to live life just as we please. And at the same time, we hunger for someone or something to embrace us and direct us. It's, it's a paradox. It's the paradox of every serious religious practice. You see, if Fox Mulder of the X-Files had concrete evidence that his sister and Scully had been abducted by aliens and come back if he had been able to touch and talk with an extraterrestrial himself. Then his whole life would have been way, way different, right? He, he would have been swimming upstream the rest of his life. He wouldn't have been looking out there for the truth. He would have been trying to express to people and convince people of the truth that only he knew because he'd experienced it. They hadn't. So, so how can they believe it the way he believes it? And what if, Thomas must have thought, what if I become convinced that Jesus is resurrected? What if I'm convinced that by seeing and touching Jesus, he really was alive and, and his death was defeated and, and Jesus was really, truly God in the flesh? Well, then Thomas probably thought intuitively, I can't ever be the same. And of course, we know what happened. What happened to and in Thomas and the other disciples who became convinced? Huh? They abandoned themselves to God, didn't they? To the risen Jesus. They became new, resurrected people themselves. They poured out their lives in living as Jesus lived and loving as Jesus loved. And they were willing to die as Jesus died. Their lives were never the same after they went all in, after they fully believed. That's the invitation. That's the promise. To you, to me, to every human being. Abandon yourself to God, to the God of new life. And you'll never be the same. See, that sort of thing just strips you of, of all the old ways of seeing and living. But it's not magic. And it's not easy. And it's certainly not a sort of, now I get it, sort of thing. Following, believing, trusting, abandoning. That way of life, it comes and goes for most of us. It requires a kind of constant dying, a dying daily. And none of us, none of us are very good at that. It requires us to be reoriented in our lives, to live with a depth of willingness and love that is pretty elusive. See, believing, seeing is, is not a matter of intellectual or mental assent. And Thomas knew that. It meant a new way of living. And the same is true today. Believing Jesus is raised from the dead and death is defeated means much more than just coming to church. 
doing personal devotions or being a decent moral person, and those things are good, don't get me wrong. Trusting God for your life in its entirety means every day, over and over again, each decision made is from the same principle from which Jesus made his decisions. How, what's the best way to love in this situation? Even when it's messy and complicated, to ask that kind of question. It means to practice a humility and a vulnerability that does not determine a direction or decision based on personal impact, but on the impact of others. See, no longer if I believe Jesus and his life, death, and resurrection are the essence to living, can I act as though life is all about me. I've been given life. I know that from my depths, and, and having been gracefully given life and love, my own living has to be more and more about others. So how I spend my money, it's no longer a matter of personal gratification and convenience, but how the use of these financial resources impacts others. How and, and what I consume, it's not just a matter of what pleases me, but what is just and life-giving for others. How I vote isn't only about what will make my life better or make me more secure, but what policies and candidates will do for the least and the most vulnerable. Having a living Jesus in life means life is about Jesus and those Jesus loves. I want to believe that way. I do. I want to believe that way to the depth, to that willingness, to that love, but I struggle with it. That's why I love Thomas. <laughs> That's why I love this story. It comes around every year. And not every three years, as most of our readings do, but every year after Easter, we get Thomas and his doubting and his struggling. And that's why it's important to be part of a congregation that doesn't claim to have it all together or to get it right all the time. That's why I, I love and I need to gather with others who practice living with and following this risen Jesus. It's why I so appreciate it when I see in others a willingness for loving service and attention to the smallest in life. I, I get inspired when I see that. I'm glad that being a Christian to most of us doesn't mean keeping some strict morality or rigid doctrine, but rather is, is a desire to love our neighbors as Jesus loved those around him. I want to believe. I want to believe fully and wholeheartedly and well. I'll bet you do too. Following that desire, following that deep desire. That's all God asks us. Amen. by faith and not by sight with gracious words draw near O Christ who spoke as none e'er spoke my peace be with you here we may not touch your hands and side nor follow where you trod, but in your promise we rejoice 
and cry, my Lord and God. Help then, O Lord, our unbelief, and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where you are found. For you, O resurrected Lord, are found in means divine, beneath the water and the word, beneath the bread and And when our life of faith is done in realms of clearer light, may we behold you as you are with full and endless Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their needs. Oh, we want to believe, oh God, we want to believe. We want to believe wholly and fully and wholeheartedly all of our lives, and yet it's so hard. We want what we want, and sometimes what we want is at odds with what's good for others, what's good for creation. And so we pray, O oh Lord, as gently as possible, strip us of, of our resistance. Enable us courageously to follow you in ways that we have perhaps failed to do so before. Give us people around us to inspire us to that kind of courageous, wholehearted, resurrected living. Make us new. Make us new, gracious God, for the sake of the one who makes all things new. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. That's our prayer, O oh God, for the whole world. We see it. We see it so broken. Wars. Aggression. Suffering. Homelessness. Refugees. Hunger division among religious people who speak of love, among races. We know, O oh Lord God, that one great big miracle is not going to be what it takes, but it's going to take all of us living and trusting and loving in new ways. And we pray that that willingness to love and trust in new ways would spread to those who have great influence in the world, that those who make decisions that impact tens of thousands, perhaps millions of others, would somehow be moved by stories and images and experiences of grace and mercy. So we pray for this world, Lord God, and for those who seem to be in charge and for our interaction day in and day out. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And for those who we carry in our hearts, Lord, we speak their names, though you know who they are, but we lift them to the healing light of your love. So we pray for Lois Beery, Kimberly Beery Ryan, Meg Reidler, Susan Franklin, Jennifer Salt, Ryan Thomas, Sherry Houghton, Adam Luckhopt, Karen McCarty, Bill Whitman, David Michael Fry, Joseph Pagnanelli, Terry Moore, Mary Lou Conkle, Freddie Hessler, for Mike Amaralt, for the family of Joe Kirkwood, for those who serve in the military from this congregation, and for those who we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts. Amen. 
Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Take a moment, greet one another with God's peace. I think Tyler's going to bring us a, yeah, Tyler's bringing us a gift this morning while you share whatever gifts you brought for God's kingdom, and, uh, and we will put the gifts on the table and hope God is there.
Let us stand and give thanks for all these good gifts. Bread and wine, wealth and talent. Holy God, your generosity and abundance dazzles us. May we use these gifts that we've been given to share your presence in a way that brings fullness and life in this world. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Lord, who revealed yourself to us in Jesus. Come to us as Emmanuel shared your glory and your passion on the cross and made promises to us in the resurrection. So with the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we sing this unending hymn. God of creation, we give thanks for this wonderful gift of life that you've given us and for revealing the eternal life that you've promised us now. We trust all those promises this morning, Lord, even with our doubts. Help us trust, God. Help us trust the promise of Jesus to be here when we gather. For that was a promise he made in the night in which he was betrayed, where he took bread and broke it and gave thanks, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup and he blessed and he gave for all to drink, saying, This cup is a sign of the new covenant shed in my blood for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat this bread and drink this wine, we are proclaiming the mystery of faith that Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Fill this meal with your abundant love so that we might fill your world with that love. Come, Spirit, come. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Yeah. 
precious Lamb of God. Because of your grace, I can finish the race, the precious Lamb of God, the precious Lamb of God. You may be seated. The first table, it will be the, for those that are worshiping at home and for those who would rather receive communion in uh, your seats uh, uh, with a communion kit, if you would uh, release that white wafer now. The body of Christ given for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. Amen. We'll bring forward for the rest to be served. The green blade rises from the buried grain. We eat that in dark earth many days has lain. Love lives again that with the dead has been. Love is come again like a rising green. In the grave they laid him, loved by hatred slain, thinking that he would never wake again. Laid in the earth like grain that sleeps unseen. Love is come again like wheat arising green. Forth he came at Easter like the risen grain. He that for three days in the grave had lain. Raised from the dead, my living Lord is seen. Love is come again like wheat arising green. When our hearts are wintry, grieving or in pain, your touch can call us back to life again. Fields of our hearts that dead and bare have been. Love is come again like wheat arising.
the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, we give thanks this morning that you have met us in this place. May we trust the presence we have known here in worship, and may that carry us forth in the week ahead. Amen. Um, just a, a few real quick announcements before we uh, scatter to be God's people in the world. Uh, take a look at the bulletin board. About everything's going on that, that ever goes on. I, I'm doing morning prayers at 9 o'clock. If you want to tune into our Facebook page uh, for uh, scripture and thoughts on it, then a prayer that gathers us. And uh, I'm teaching on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. You can look for the time for that. We're in Romans uh, 8. Uh, and we do tape the 1130 teaching if you want to watch that later on in the day if you can't be at 1130 in the morning on Romans 8. And I'm also teaching at uh, 630 uh, a new class on uh, Luther and the Commandments. Uh, you know, Luther is kind of known as somebody who didn't, uh, who didn't uh, have a lot of use for the law, but it, it couldn't be further from the truth. He, he wanted the law to, to help us find his grace, God's grace. So uh, come to that class. It, it should be fun for weeks. Um, and we're, te we're serving Faith at 8th on Thursday this week. Uh, um, men's uh, homeless shelter that we've been involved with for years. Uh, and next Sunday at the 9.30 worship service is Children's Sunday. So if you come at 11 o'clock, we've invited our preschool to come and, and share some good gifts at that service. And our two children's choirs are going to be there singing. Uh, so uh, we should have some visitors next week. So you people try to smile and, and look, look normal for a week. And then we'll... Uh, oh. What else do I have here? Um, oh, these butterflies that are in the building, uh, that hole again has uh, delighted us with Easter, these Easter butterflies. They're made, I, I just learned this today, they're made of paper mache and there's seeds embedded in them. And you go and you plant those and they're wildflower seeds uh, that are there. So my goal is like there's six of them right here next to Diane Davis right here on that little thing is take all of these and, and, and let's get planting them this, uh, this weekend. So there should be none left. Diane's going to put all those in her pocket as she's leaving and, and delighting her house. And also these lilies on the altar here, uh, the people that uh, paid for those, the members who paid for those to, to uh, brighten up our Easter morning, they must not want those last 12. So if you, uh, if you want to take those with you as you're leaving today and plant those, Otherwise, we'll be uh, gifting them to our preschool families as they come in tomorrow, which they'll be delighted with that, too. So uh, there you go. I think that's everything. We have a date now for our blood drive. It's June 5th, uh, Sunday, June 5th. We're going to do that like in, it's during church and after church. And so uh, you'll be seeing a way to sign up for that already. We have a we have a QR code, and we got other fancy things like that to, to get you signed up. So we're hoping that's a good gift for the world. Why don't you stand? We'll have our we'll have our uh, Easter greeting. <laughs> I got I got Tim feeding me my lines over here on the side stage. Hallelujah! Christ is risen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you all with favor and grant you God's peace. Amen. The glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory thou or death hast won. Angels in bright raiment throw the stone away. Kept the folded grave cloths where thy
my body lay. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory thou or death hast won. Lo, Jesus meets thee, risen from the tomb. Lovingly he greets thee, scatters fear and gloom. Let his church with gladness hymns of triumph sing. For the Lord now liveth, death hath lost its sting. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory thou or death hast won. No more we doubt thee, glorious Prince of Peace. Life is not without thee, aid us in our strife. Make us more than conquerors through thy deathless love. Bring us safe through Jordan to thy home above. Thine is the glory, risen, conquering Son. Endless is the victory thou or death hast 